Now that we have our database file ready, what we can uh, do is to start creating our index file. So inside of the root of our project, we're going to create a new HTML file, which we'll call index, and its uh, extension is a.html, because that's all we need here for, for our index file. We will be using PHP, but our main index file is simply .html. Now, uh, for the title, we can put something like my shopping list with Angular JS. And then after the title, what we're going to do is to link to the uh, font awesome uh, CSS. So if we go to our browser, navigate to Google and simply type font awesome. There we go. The first link that pops in, if you click on that link, then if we go to get started, scroll down a little bit and you have the link which we need to paste inside of the head of our index file so this is basically the link to the uh, to the font awesome css uh, on the content delivery network and what this font awesome is is basically uh the the font which uh contains icons and if we scroll up go to the icon section you'll see basically what this font is by simply using these classes on the right, right hand side, uh, we get the representation on the left. So that's all. If we go back to our editor and paste this link, which we've just copied, so that's uh, giving us access to all these nice fonts. Uh, the next thing it will be link to a href CSS uh, forward slash normalize dot CSS. Then we put real uh, style sheet and then media. This one will be for screen only. Okay, if I copy this entire thing, obviously this normalize came with the foundation. If you are not using foundation, then obviously um, link to whatever styling you have. But because I'm using foundation, I'm going to uh, also link to this uh, foundation uh, minified version as well. So foundation min.css. Uh, the next thing we're going to be linking to is the file which we haven't got yet, uh, but which we'll create in just a moment, which is app-screen, which is basically our application for the screen. And then we have application as well for, so app for hyphen print. So when we're printing basically our shopping list, this is where we're going to be defining styles for this. Apart from this, we also need to provide a script um, and we're going to be linking to S or C. We're going to be linking to JS Angular J, uh, dot min dot JS, which is obviously our Angular file. And if I copy this line, paste it underneath, the next file rather than Angular now is a shopping hyphen list.js, which we also haven't got yet. So let's quickly go to our JS folder and create it. So we create a new file, uh, JavaScript file, which will be shopping hyphen list. And it's obviously with the extension .js. Uh, and we also need to create our application screen inside of the CSS folder. So new uh, file, simply application screen CSS. And another file, we can close this file for now. It's application print.css. So new file application print.css. We can also close it now. Now it's time uh, to create the structure uh, of our page. So in between the opening and closing body tag, if we create a few new lines, and I'm going to start by simply typing h1 tag and h1 tag will contain my shopping list. Now, if I save the file and preview it in a browser, if I refresh the page, you can see my shipping list goes right to the left, basically top and left uh, corner of the page. Now, because we are using Angular JS, sorry, not Angular JS, we're using foundation here, we can easily fix this problem. Basically, I want uh, the main container to be of the specific width. By default, uh, foundation has it around I think 1000 pixels or something like this and we want this container to be centered in order in order to do it with foundation we simply need to create a div with the class raw and inside of this raw class we create the column so div with the class column now anything if I scroll down and cut this heading 
put it inside of the column uh, wrapping tag. If we now go to our save obviously the page and go back to our browser, refresh the page, you can see now the text has moved a little bit more to the center. If I use the fire back to show you exactly what it looks like, you can see the row now is of the width and it's going to be in REM, so it's 62.5 REM, max width, and then we've got a column inside of the this raw uh, container which has the padding of uh, 0.9375 REM. And then we obviously have a content inside of it. So this is how we wrap in the content in order to make sure that obviously on the left and right hand side we've got some space and obviously that everything works um, obviously seamlessly throughout and any on any on any device basically. So that's a little bit of the of of the the, the story obviously about raw and column in foundation. But let's go back to our code. And the next thing after we have created our heading is the form, the first top form when we're actually adding new records. And this form will have the ID of add form. In between the opening and closing form tags, we're going to start with another div with the class raw, because this is going to be another raw uh, inside of the column, as you can see now. And then we create another div with the class column. And inside of this column, we're going to start with a span, with a class span label. And that's everything for now. What we're going to put here is you need at least a question mark uh, characters more. So this is the first message. If I just scroll up a little bit so you can actually see this, and perhaps if I uh, just hide this browser on the left. If I now copy this entire span, paste it underneath twice this time, uh, and what we're going to put here is the second one will be remaining characters and then colon and a question mark. Then we're going for uh, question mark characters too many. Basically, these are two different messages which will be displayed uh, based on the input. If there are uh, too little characters, there are not enough characters to allow us to basically enable the, the submit button, then the first message will be displayed. If uh, the characters within the field are within the range we, that we specify our minimum and maximum, then everything's fine. So the second label is going to be shown. And then if there are too many characters, then the third one is going to be shown. Obviously, uh, whichever one is displayed, the other two will be hidden. So that's our... Um, uh, first uh, section of the form but uh, for the th for the last one we also want to add the warning class which is basically going to add this red color to this um, specific uh, text so that's our first row then we go and create another row div with the class row and then we're going to have two columns here sorry actually not two we're going to have more than two columns we're going to have uh, three columns uh, first div with a class and now the class is going to be large eight meaning on large screens uh, which is usually desktops uh, make sure that this column has 80 percent basically that's what it says uh, columns this time so large eight columns then if I scroll down we're going to create another div class now large uh, we're going for two columns it will all make sense in just a moment when we go into actually add content here and I'll show you in a browser how it works. And then we copy this uh, and paste it again. By default, foundation comes with 12 column layouts, so that's why we are splitting this up. Obviously, 8, 2 plus 2 uh, all together gives us 12. So we're giving 80% for the main field. Then we're going to have another field for the quantity or weight. And then we're going to have select menu in the last column. Let's continue with this exercise in the next video.